This is insane. Don't touch my ribs. Best moqueca so far. I didn't expect to eat Russian. This is the picanha. Cheers. Only in Rio. What is Brazilian food all about? With more than 40 days of traveling around Brazil, we've been eating and drinking a lot. But that's the kind of Usain Bolt-like discipline it requires when you want to understand the food culture in a new country. This food tour takes place in Rio de Janeiro, Ilha Grande, Parachi, Balneário Camboriú, Florianópolis, Urubici, and even the German city of Blumenau. In other words, it's time for a Brazilian food coma. What's up, my boys? Welcome to another food tour. This time we are in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Of course, we are bringing our Andrea because Andrea used to live in Brazil and she is basically our Wikipedia of everything today. Is that true? Well, I'm doing my best. We have to start with the caldo queijo. It's actually made from cassava flour, which means that this is gluten-free. Mm. Oh my, is this gluten-free? This is tapioca. You can get this all over Brazil and they can put in a lot of whatever they want, uh, as I understand. This one we have cheese, it's delicious, but not as cheesy as I imagined. This is also a tapioca and this is made with fried eggs inside. It's very interesting because I would expect the starch to almost melt when you have an egg in, but it still looks kind of crispy and firm. It's a little bit sad that we have so much food today, otherwise I would have eaten it all. After a saliva-inducing breakfast table, it was time to wash it down with some of that Brazilian juice they keep talking about. Hola! Hola, <laughs> so in Brazil they have a lot of exotic foods that you can't really get anywhere in Europe. So we are going to see if we can have a juice with some fruits from Amazonas. It looks like a bell pepper, right? But once you touch it, it feels like a strawberry or papaya. It's called cashew. Oh my god. This is such a strange fruit. It's like a mix between strawberry, banana and melon. Oh wow. I'm hooked on the juices here. They have such a smoothness to them. I don't know how they do it. Juiced up with the essential vitamins, we had to make an emergency stop. We found dragon fruit. This is the most delicious fruit of all time. Yeah. I could live from this fruit. 39, 35. This dragon fruit was half a kilo, so it wasn't exactly cheap. But due to our dragon fruit fetish, we had to get one. So um, we're gonna stay in the lane of fruits because now we have a special guest his name is Obadan. Obadan! We wanted to include Obadan in our culinary experience to show a different side of the Brazilian food scene. Street vendors like Obadan are an integral part of the food and drink scene all across Brazil, especially on the beaches. The majority of these street vendors live in the favelas, where life isn't exactly a bed of roses. Many have a daily commute of two to three hours each way. Obadan sells acai for a living. He gets it from his home city, Manuage, which is in the middle of the Amazon jungle. Acai is super popular in Brazil, and you'll find it almost everywhere. But beware that the quality isn't always the same. And that's why we chose Obadan, as he has the best acai you can get. Keep in Jesus. Wow. There is no doubt that Brazil is on top of their game when it comes to fruits. I mean, it's no surprise, since most of the country is one big jungle. But the freshness and taste really are next level. Anyway, it was now time for a light lunch, where Andreas better have Giovanni tagged along. You suggested we go to this place. What's the name? Manuel is Joaquin. And this is where we open the prom, should I say, with one of the best inventions of all time, a icy, estupidamente gelada uh, beer. Beer are always much colder here. When we were greeted in the airport yesterday, we bought a Corona that was so cold that it was almost frozen. The Brazilian beer culture is nothing short of incredible. It's obvious that the Brazilian people care deeply about their beers. The selection is what seems as almost endless 
and I never came across a mediocre tasting beer. They are always stupid cold and the glasses always come straight from the freezer. And if they serve by the bottle, they will put your beer in an insulated beer holder so your beer maintains an icy temperature of minus 2 degrees Celsius. What really blew my mind was that some shops even offer a beer while browsing. Sugar mama. Equality, Sugar mama. equality is on the rise. Cheers, only in Rio. Anyway, what are we eating here? Amelia, you're having something on your plate. We're actually starting with something we know very well from Portugal. We are having a pastis de bacalhau, which here is called a bolinho de bacalhau. It's basically dried codfish that is shredded up and then they mix it with potato and they deep fry it with some garlic and some parsley. This bolinho de bacalhau tastes exactly like a pastis de bacalhau, but the main difference is that you have this oil with vinegar and garlic and that definitely takes it to another level. It's very, very good. This is definitely not gluten free. It's deep fried, it's gluten heaven, and then they stuff different things in them. You can have kamadawi cashew, which is uh, shrimps and cheese. You can have this one, which is minced meat with mint and olive. Every time you go out with friends, you tend to take those before you have dinner. Or at the beach, like or right before or right after the beach, you take So you have those. you have the street vendors on the beach? Yeah, also, or you just go to a bottega like we do now, right after the beach, before you go home, shower, sleep, and then you go out, you take some of that. When you lived here, did you gain a lot of weight because of the food? Weirdly enough, I didn't. I don't know why, but I think that a Brazilian diet on caipirinha, pastels, and a lot of walking, it's not so bad for you, actually. But you have to walk in Havaianas. Always. Cheers in breakfast, caipirinha! Speaking of caipirinha, we have to talk about the national drink of Brazil. This is basically a holy liquid that the Brazilians just can't get enough of. It's usually very strong and very sugary. Brazilians love sugar. Luckily for us Europeans, you can also get it without added sugar, which only makes the taste stronger. The alcohol used for caipirinhas is called cachaça. Cachaça is a distilled spirit made from fermented sugarcane juice and is one of the most popular spirits in Brazil. And like beer, some shops also offers a shot of cachaça for free. But before we predicate Brazilians as notorious alcoholics, we have to talk about perhaps the best beverage of the entire country, coconuts. Got big coconuts. In Brazil, you find coconuts everywhere. Whether you are on a bar in Ipanema, a random gas station or a tropical beach, you will find cold, fresh coconuts. Interestingly enough, they are very effective against hangovers, which is why we coined beers, caipirinhas and coconuts as the holy trinity. This moment right here is one of my favorite moments in Brazil because it's coconut time. And the coconuts here are one of my favorite things. They're so delicious. They're so fresh. They're not too sweet, but they still have a lot of flavor. And then sitting by this very windy bay, it's, it's Brazil. I like it. Having already enjoyed plenty of delicious food, we kept asking ourselves what Brazilian food is all about. In order to figure this out, we had to eat our way through Brazil. In Urubici, four hours from Florianópolis, we went to what is known as a kilo place. It's basically a buffet with a wide selection of different foods. You'll find kilo restaurants everywhere in Brazil, but not all of them are equally good. So basically the concept is that you just load up the plate and then they weigh it and then you pay a kilo price. What do you think about the food? Mm. No? There are better kilo places, but well, we choose the one that's close to us. We have to live with it. But actually the concept of kilo place is a pretty cool and it's a very typical thing for Brazilian people to go for lunch. So if you have a corporate job or whatever, for lunch you have your break and you will go to a kilo place and you will get really good value for money on most kilo places. For me and Jon, it didn't take long to find our favorite kind of Brazilian food the seafood. We had some of the best octopus in our life when we visited Balneario Camporio, a high-rise city also known as Mini Rio. We became very close friends with the seafood dish called Mukeka. Mukeka comes in many different varieties. Today I'm having one that is made from fish. It's super saucy, it's super delicious and it's very, it's a fresh dish to get. Normally they will buy fresh fish and use it from with all the local uh, vegetables like onion, pepper, capsicum, and then they will let it simmer for some time until the fish gets all smooth and delicious. And by the way guys, the food here is outstanding. Best moqueca so far. Back in Rio, we took a taxi to Urca. Urca is a wealthy neighborhood and one of the oldest in Rio. 
It's known for its quirky architecture, but also for being one of the safest neighborhoods. This is where locals love to come and hang out while eating and drinking. Cheers. What are we having here? Pastels in a very traditional place from 1938. Welcome to Urca. You insisted uh, that we should come here to check it out. I like it here a lot because it's a very different architecture. You are in the center in a big city, but it feels very villagey, very homely. Um, you have really good restaurants like the one we are here now, where you have really good food. You just sit here, you have beers with friends and just enjoy the views. Saúchi, cariño y amor. I gotta say, sorry for chewing in your face, but this is really delicious. delicious right? It's delicious. Bebesh, bebesh, or canzao. Do you have subtitles when you speak Portuguese as well? Because I think no one understands it, not in Brazil nor in Portugal. So far, I believe that you don't have the same Brazilian kitchen cuisine as you have in Portugal. The Portuguese cuisine is the foundation of food in Portugal. You don't have one Brazilian kitchen, you have all these melting pots of food which make it so unique at the same time. And exactly that is the missing piece of the Brazilian food puzzle. Sure, you have a category of Brazilian food, but as Giovanni said, it's a melting pot of everything. Sushi is huge in Brazil, Italian food too. More than 18% of Brazilians are of Italian descent. In Sao Paulo, you have the world's biggest Japanese community outside of Japan. For us, the highlight of the Brazilian food has been to explore all these different kitchens. The most interesting restaurant was this cute little Russian joint located in the center of Florianópolis. We are here at the restaurant where it's two partners. One is all Brazilian, Eddie. 100% Brazilian. And in the kitchen, it's half Moldavian, and Russian, Moldavian Russian. and half Russian. Oh my God, this is delicious. You know, I hate soup normally, but I'm, I, I, I would go out with this one. This is insane. I didn't expect to eat Russian. In Brazil you also find excellent Mexican food and usually at suspiciously low prices. Sometimes though, Brazilian food can get too greasy and deep fried for our taste, but you always have a wide array of kitchens from all over the world right at your fingertips. We even found Mongolian barbecue and a two-star Michelin restaurant. So I tell to all my friends, everyone that comes here, you have your own, don't touch my ribs, they are delicious. That was expensive footage. Yeah. Ten reais. <laughs> this is a brigadeiro. And it's actually said that this was invented by a confectioner who was actually making these small sweets as a part of a campaign, a political campaign. Today they are mostly made at home for people to enjoy when they have guests over. But you can also find them on a lot of these small bakeries and snack bars. Mm. This is an orange cake and this is very typical from the north of Brazil. And then she told us you have to try this one because this is what we eat more than this. Every country has a version of this cake, right? But this definitely is a very fresh version. It's, um, it almost reminds me of Christmas for some reason. Well, we are in November. É uma mistura de castanha, gengibre, amendoim, leite de coco, e esse daqui é o caruru, que é quiabo. É um legume. Esse aqui é o camarão defumado. E aqui é tomate verde. Ah, é o típico do prato. Do you want the beer? Or do you have? It's a stupid question. This food here is called acarajé. It comes from Bahia. It's normally served as a hamburger, but uh, the lady was nice enough to put all the ingredients separately so that we can taste uh, each of them individually. It was created by the um, African slaves in the north of Brazil. Interestingly enough, the, if you want to sell this food on the street or in a, in a restaurant, you have to wear the clothes like the ladies in there. Mmm! Hey, boa? Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. The, the tiny shrimps are smoked. That I'm not a fan of. I actually like them, but I would like to try the burger version, where you just mix everything together and then have one big bite of all these different flavors. Yeah. By the way, the beer, as usual, is very good as well. Cheers.
Obrigado. Obrigado, querido. Um prazer. Uh, parece boa. <laughs> it's a beautiful supermarket. Drunk or sober, it's beautiful. We're, we're making a food tour, but yet you insist that we go to... Yes, because what I like about it is you have a supermarket like you always have, but then you go, you buy your wine, whatever wine you want, and then you go upstairs, you have food, and you open your bottle of wine and you just enjoy. It's actually a, a very cheap dating location as well. But it's pretty cool. At least you don't have these dry vegetables. In. He's obsessed with the supermarket. No, I'm obsessed with everything in Brazil. But did you ever have a date in here? I didn't. I went with Andrea though, and friends. We didn't like the friends that much, so it was a very good moment to be here. So officially, we are on a double date here. We are eating food. This is still a food vlog uh, because we have Paulo Queijo once again. While sitting in this fancy supermarket, it makes sense to talk about the food Brazilians cook in their own home. We were lucky to visit our friend Henry and his family in the favela of Vidigal. This is as local as it gets. We had breakfast and lunch there, overlooking perhaps the prettiest sight you can get in Rio. Here we realized that Brazilians have a strong passion for barbecue. So what, you're a chef or what? Yeah. Are you any good? No. <laughs> If Henry's family is even remotely indicative of what is cooked in the homes of Brazilians, we are very impressed. And to no surprise, the beers were of course kept in the freezer. The food here tastes even better than it looks. And oh, yes. Yes, that's, um, I mean, I, can we come tomorrow again? Yeah, you can I'll come even do the, I'll even, even do the hike every morning. No, you <laughs> came here! Come here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This is not planned. Foi um bom dia, bom dia. Até logo. What a small world. Somebody told me that we're getting the best picanha um, for your budget. Yes. For my budget. Yes. So what we are eating rats? Look at this right here. You have ice on it. So for those of you who are wondering, what are we doing here? Where well, is this restaurant? It is actually a rodicio. It's a churrascaria rodicio, which means that it's a place that serves meat, where they come and bring the meat to the table and they cut it at the table from a big spear or from a plate. And then it's basically an all you can eat concept. But at this place, we also have a buffet. So you can go crazy in the buffet if you want which a pro churrascaria person would never do because uh, you'll be full before you even start the meat. Picanha in Portugal is very good, but we have always been told that the best picanha is in Brazil. Yes. So, Gio and Andrea took us to Churrascaria Palace, which should give you a hint that here, the picanha should be pretty good. When people are addicted to alcohol or drugs, I'm addicted to spiciness. <laughs> Wow, that's spicy. It's not that bad. This is the third spices in the world. It's a mix, probably. It's Carolina Reaper. So Hot Ones is a scam. <laughs> the picanha is amazing. Um, is it better than in Portugal? So I know Portuguese picanha, I know Brazilian picanha by heart. It is better in Brazil. Why? Pure flavor. They just make it slightly better. I think it all depends on where you go. Where, but maybe the, the the majority of picanha could be better here because this is the origin of picanha. But I don't know yet. For us, picanha is like pizza. Even bad pizza is good pizza. Our expectations of picanha in Brazil were naturally super high, but it never got to a point where we noticed a huge difference in quality. Picanha in Portugal is amazing and picanha in Brazil is amazing. However, Brazil does win the picanha duel as the majority of cows here are grass-fed. And that actually goes for most of the meat here in Brazil. After seven or eight picanha refills, we went out for some hot dogs, tapiocas and chodos. Just kidding. At this point we could barely walk, but we had to end the day in style. And where else than Rio de Janeiro's most beautiful hotel, Copacabana Palace. Along with all these cocktails and everything, it's getting to a point where we, we, we have to stop from health reasons. Uh, 
So what is our conclusion of Brazilian food? Well, we like it a lot. Overall, we find that the general quality of the ingredients is fairly high. We didn't have more than one or two poor food experiences and we were eating out twice every single day during our 40 day stay. By far the biggest issue with Brazilian cuisine is that there isn't much of a wine culture here. The climate doesn't allow for making wine of high quality, so it's all imported and with heavy duty taxes on top. A Portuguese bottle of Soalheiro is 10 euros. In Brazil, that bottle goes for 65. We were also surprised how little of an influence Portuguese cuisine has on Brazilian food. We simply thought that Portugal and Brazil were more connected in that sense. The best way to describe our idea of Brazilian food is that it's one big melting pot of everything, which means your taste buds will never be bored. But guys, thank you for watching. Obrigado por ver o vídeo. E até o próximo vlog. Bye, tudo bem. Arrivederé. Arrivederé. Is that is that the Romanian? Yes. Arrivederé. Like arrivederci. Yes. Really? Or like au revoir. Wow. Six. That's Danish. Spoken Danish. <laughs>